<coughs> now um, last time we were discussing that how we can generate emf when we cut through the magnetic field lines okay today uh, sir, yes you said we will go to a more basic topic okay so you don't want to complete this one no because you said that uh, none of the other students have done it okay and you want me to do a simpler topic no teacher i don't mind personally because i've i'm i've done this so i'm taking this right now but you okay. said since the other students haven't taken it won't benefit them okay but i'm not starting from the beginning because uh uh, some of the students are in pipeline and they will be joining in a day or two and then we'll be starting from the uh, first topic uh, we we are doing a kind of uh, demo classes over here so we you you can ask any question that you have personally okay. that uh, any past paper question that you've been solving and you couldn't do or you can tell me any topic that you want to do okay Okay, so let's see what the rest of the class thinks. Hiba, do you have any topic in mind that you want to do? Mm, not really. And what about you, Sufyan? No, no, sir. Uh, Ramin? No. Your voice is very low. Can you come closer to the microphone? Uh, I don't think so. No specific topic, so. Okay, okay. So I'm picking a topic by myself. A topic that makes a uh, student life very uh, miserable is graphs. Now, what are the basic things a student should know for the graphs? X's and x-axis. A graph has two axes, x-axis and y-axis. This is a quantity x, this is quantity y. A graph is actually, this is, these are axes. And the region is called the plane. This is not the graph. Graph is this line that shows the relationship between the quantity on y-axis and quantity on x-axis. Now, what we do is we select any two points on this line, point A, point B. And then from the higher point, we draw a vertical line. And from the lower point, we draw a horizontal line and we complete a right angle triangle like this. This is the right angle. This side is called rise. And this side is called run. And we calculate a quantity that is called gradient. Gradient equals to rise divided by run. Uh, some math students also remember gradient as um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay? Same thing. Okay, sir. Same thing. Now, gradient is rise over run. Rise will always come from the y-axis. Dot the value of rise, how high is this rise? You will take the top value from the y-axis and the bottom value from the y-axis and you will find how big is this. Where are you getting the rise from? Y-axis. Where are you getting the run from? X-axis. X -axis. So we are getting run from x-axis. And, and rise from y-axis. So actually, 
when we are finding gradient, we are dividing the quantity on y-axis with quantity on x-axis. And I have seen most of the students like, like in, in a very miserable condition when they are studying graphs in physics and they, they, they are trying to remember the gradients of uh, this graph, the gradient is this, this graph, the gradient is this, this graph, the gradient is this. Actually, it is not um, that you have to remember them. Try to understand what you are doing. For example, on y-axis, you have quantity y. And on x-axis, you have quantity x. And when you are finding gradient, you are dividing rise with run. So you are practically dividing quantity y with quantity x. And all you have to do is start remembering what is quantity y divided with quantity x. Let me give you an example. This is a plane. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, if we have distance on y-axis and time on x-axis, now, what will be the gradient of this graph? You don't need to remember it. You need to understand that when you will be finding gradient, you will be dividing quantity on y-axis with quantity on x-axis. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, you will be dividing quantity on y-axis with quantity on x-axis. So you will be dividing distance with time. So what do we get if we divide distance with time? Speed. So that means gradient of distance time graph is speed. gradient will be equal to speed. Similarly, if we have velocity on y-axis and time on x-axis, in this case, when we will be finding gradient, gradient is y2 minus y1. In this case, y2 is v, y1 is u, v minus u over t. So gradient is rise, which is change in velocity divided by run, which is time. So we are dividing change in velocity with time. So gradient is acceleration. So this is how we, we should understand that what graph we are dealing with and what with the gradient of that particular graph. Similarly, if we have mass on y-axis and volume on x-axis, what will be the gradient of that graph? Could you repeat that? If we have a graph with mass on y-axis and volume of the same object on x-axis, what will be the gradient of this graph? So when you will be finding gradient, you will be doing rise over run. So you will be doing mass over volume. So what is mass over volume? Have you ever done a quantity that is mass divided by volume? No. Yes, you have. Anybody? It is dense density. 
So similarly, if if there is force and area, for example, force and extension, then the gradient will be spring constant. So there can be so many gradients in physics. So, but in your syllabus, the examiner requires you to understand gradient of distance time graph and velocity time graph. And area represents no quantity. In this case, area represents distance or displacement. Now, just to explain this, like uh, in order to be able to um, read a graph, you should be able to draw a graph. Okay, let's see. This is a guess what is this? Tree. <coughs> Good. No. Now, guess what is this? Tell me when you understand what, what I'm drawing. Is it a generator? Car. Yes, it's a car. As seen from the top. Okay. okay. So there is a car and there is another car. Then there is another car. So how many cars are there? Three cars. Car A, car B, car C. <laughs> There's a person standing here who has a stopwatch in his hand. And on he, he can use the stopwatch to measure the distance and time and everything. So he records the distance traveled by each car. and gets the following results. No. This is Time in seconds, zero, one, two, three, four, five. And this is distance of car one in meters, distance of car two in meters, distance of car three in meters. So car number one is at a distance 10. <coughs> when the timer starts, and it goes to 13 after one second, 16 after another second, 19, and then 22, and then 25. These are the distances after one second for car number one. Car number two, 11, 13, 16, 20, and 25. 
car number three. They were all together when the timer began. And after one second, car number three was at 15 meter mark. Another second, it was at 19 meter mark, then 22 meter mark, 24 meter mark, and 25 meter mark. So at the end of the fifth second, all of the cars were same distance apart from the tree. They all started from the same distance. They were same distance apart. But we are more concerned about how the variation is happening all along. So in order to understand that, I have to be more interactive. So I will be asked you some questions. Let me first pin this thing to the screen into the screen and I'm now coming here. So, Sofian, can you tell me which car is traveling with a uniform speed and why? Your, your uh, voice is very low. Yeah, can you repeat the question, sir? My question is, can you tell me which car, car number one, two, or three, is traveling with a uniform speed? Okay, Mars. Uh, car number one. And uh, what made you say that? Because after every second, it travels three meters. Hmm. Good. And in every second, the car was traveling same distance. It traveled a distance of three meters in one second and three meters in another second, three meters in another second. So it means it is traveling same distance every second. So car number one is traveling with a constant speed. Now, which car is traveling with an increasing speed? We have a newcomer in the class right now. What is her name? Tatiana or Gia? Hello? Nope. Okay. So, <clears throat> Hiba, which car is traveling with an increasing speed? Um, car two. Can you explain why? I'm not entirely sure. You're not supposed to be. You're a student. But saying anything wrong is not going to harm you. Um. Just, just share. Like, obviously, obviously, if you're saying that car number two is traveling with an increasing speed, you have observed something. Try to put it into words or, or just try to explain that. Not, I'm not asking you to, for a correct explanation, but whatever you're thinking, just start speaking. Um, not really sure entirely how to put it into words. It just feels like it's car oh. number two. Guessing can be equally right or equally wrong, so that is not the way we can uh, proceed. So... Your guess is right, but I need to know why is that? Ramin. Yes, sir. Which car is traveling with an increasing speed and why? Nope. Listen. Car number two is traveling with an increasing speed. And the reason is because it is traveling more distance in every next second. Look, from zero to one, it traveled just one meter. From one to two, it traveled two meters. From two to three, it traveled three meters. From three to four, it traveled four meters. From four to five, it traveled five meters. So it is traveling more distance in every coming second. 
that means its speed is increasing. It is traveling with an increasing speed. Now, car number three is traveling with a decreasing speed. Look, it traveled five meter in the first second, nine, four meter in the next second, three meter in the next second, two meter in the next second, one meter in the next second. So it is traveling less distance in every coming second. So right now, you all have to draw some of the diagrams. So I will recommend that you um, arrange your pencils and scales with you. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, <coughs> what you have to do is, on, on your notebook, you have to make a vertical axis like this. And the horizontal axis like this. Okay, try to make it with a scale, that will be better. Let's see, you can start this scale, this side with 10. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, Okay, uh, 22, 24, 26. This is distance in meter. And on x axis, this is zero. After regular intervals, Make one, two, three, four, and five. This is time in second. So you have to make three copies of this thing and make sure it is approximately all right. And, and the problems that you can do is, on, on x-axis, normally when students are writing one, two, three, four, they are not equally spaced, okay? You have to make them equally spaced. And on y-axis, you can use one line on your notebook as two. So now look at the data for car number one. At t equals to zero, t equals to zero, the car number one is at 10. At one second, it goes to 13. At two seconds, it goes to 16. At three seconds, it is at 19. At four seconds, it is at 22. And at five seconds, it is at 25. So, then what you do is you draw a straight line through all of them. See, this is the distance time graph for car number one. You have to draw the distance time graph for car number one, and then you have to draw it for car number two, and then you have to draw it for car number three and share your work in the group, hurry up, everybody, start working now. And uh, if you need data, you can take a screenshot of this thing right now. It is on the screen. Take a screenshot. Done. Hello? Uh, yes, sir, done. Good. I have to get a screenshot. Now uh, you can see the data from there.
So if if you are having trouble in understanding what I'm talking about, you can talk to me right now. 